y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're going to take a look at 10 quick tips that can help you in your hand tool woodworking. And most of them are probably going to start some arguments, so <laughs> let's have some fun. So every now and then, chisels get dull and that's just not pretty. And a lot of people worry about sharpening. I honestly think that it's a really quick and simple thing. I'm going to set it here, I'm going to go check it, got a little bit of a burr. And then clean it off. And we can try it again. Just like that. Now we got this nice clean end and I can pair them off. So one of the problems with a bit and brace is it's very hard when you're drilling vertically to see if you are plumb and square and your holes don't tend to be quite as accurate as you want. Usually I prefer to drill horizontally. I can put the uh, stock into my waist and if I want to I can actually grab a ring, slide it on here and the nice thing about that is it lets me know if I'm vertical it slides back and forth and I can very easily see if I'm true this way. So I can drill a nice square clean hole very accurately and uh, if you're not married I do actually sell these rings on my website, woodbyright.com. If you've ever tried to draw a line all the way around a board and the corners don't quite match up, that's often because there are ever so slight deviations in the sides that might not be parallel. So what we can do is come over here to our first edge and our reference is going to be on, on this edge. Then I'll flip it over and now I'm going to reference this side over here. Now when I roll it to the third side, I don't want to keep the fence over here because last time I referenced this edge. I'm going to flip it around, bring my mark back over here. And then on this last side, I want to reference this face. That's where I started at. So I can start over here on this mark. And now those lines match up perfectly. All the way around the board because we're always referencing the same side and the same face, not the other two. So normally when I'm cutting this and I have a line going all the way around the board, I want to try and stay on that line all the way around. The problem is when I'm cutting, I can't see the side away from me. I can only see this line and this line. So what I'm going to do is cut down diagonally so I can see my side. And here I'm cutting on the line I can see here and here, but I can't see those two, so we're not going to do that. Then we can flip the board over, and now the other two lines are on my side. So now I can follow those lines and cut right down there. So one of the biggest problems people have with card scrapers usually is not the burr, though that can be a problem of how to sharpen it. Usually the biggest problem is the angle that it's being held at. If you get it right, you get these really nice shavings. And these make the world go round. Everything is pleasing when you get good shavings. So what you want to do is start with it perfectly vertical, put a little bend in it, and you're not going to get anything here. And then slowly lean it forward. So as I'm going, I'm going to lean it forward and tell, ooh, there I'm catching something. That's the angle I need it to be at. I need to lock that angle in. A lot of people try and scrape down here and you're just not going to be getting what you want. And if you're scraping up here, you're not going to be getting anything. It's that perfect angle, which is right about here. When people are first getting started, a lot of times they have a hard time telling what is sharp. And here, this one is pretty dull. I'm getting some curls, but I'm also getting a lot of dust. I'm getting stuff that's just not quite grabbing. That's not what you want. What you want to see is something with a nice curl all the way across the board. And even an oak like this that's really stringy, you can still get these full width curls. That's what you want to see. So if you're ever seeing this dust coming off and curls that aren't doing exactly what you want, it might be time to sharpen and get something a little bit nicer. So when a lot of people are first getting into using a saw, they tend to grab it with four fingers and they complain about the saw handles being too small. Well, they're not intended to be held with all four fingers. They're intended to be held with just three. The index finger goes and points forward and the whole saw then balances between the middle finger and the back of your palm. You should be able to balance it just like that. A very, very light touch is all you need. Index finger pointing forward. Let the saw do the balance and you can start it every time. Really light grip. You don't want to squeeze it because you squeeze it, it's going to turn you off of the line. Just set it up and let the saw do the work. Much like saws, planes are intended to be held with three fingers and the index finger pointing forward and resting on the adjuster or the iron. And especially with an old Stanley where the iron comes up a little bit farther, they are intended to be held three finger. This gives you a little bit more control and stabilization because your finger can be up here to move it around. And with that in place, put a little bit of pressure on here. And it's amazing 
what that can do. Don't grip it with all four fingers. You're not going to have the strength you need. This can be moved very easily out of your hand. Putting this finger up here then just gives you that little bit of stability you need to hold onto the plane. Three fingers, not four. Now when it comes to files and rasps, there are lots of myths and legends about them. A lot of people really hate the idea of the back drag. And honestly, with wood on regular files and rasps, the back drag is really not going to cause that much of a problem at all. Um, and if you want that speed, sometimes it's just faster to go back and forth and keep it in place. But going forward, lifting and coming back does give you a little bit more control, and so sometimes that is more preferable. Now when you hold it, whether it's a file or a rasp, you want your index finger forward, just like you do on a plane or a saw. The other one comes up here and pinches it. Some people will wrap a little bit of masking tape to protect their fingers. And the same thing on here. Sticking the finger forward will give you a little bit better control, and it becomes a little more fun to use. One of the big differences between a mallet and a hammer is the way you hold it. If you've ever worked in construction and you ever hold a hammer up here, people are going to laugh at you. You don't pound in nails holding a hammer up there. You pull it back here and you get some force on it, you can drive a nail in. But with a mallet, you hold it up by the head. You want control, you're not worrying about driving something in. You want something you can very accurately and quickly carve with and have something that has far more control. Holding it up close to the head is the proper way to hold a mallet. And in some of them, it's even more important to hold the head itself and to do the carving up there. You're not actually holding the handle, but the head. Yeah, mallets are a little bit different. So there you have it. Now, most of these may seem pretty obvious, but everyone has to learn something new every day, so here's a chance to try one or two new things. And if you have any particular quick tips, things that you really like in the shop, throw those down in the comments down below. I do read through all of them, and thank you for that. Now, here's normally where I say thank you to all of the patrons on Patreon, everyone on the uh, the side, but today I want to do something a little bit different. Imagine for a moment, you have just left your house, you've left everything you own, you don't know if you're going to be coming back to it. All you have is what you're carrying on you, and you come up to a border cross and you don't know what's going to be going on. You're just trying to get to safety. Right now, that is what's happening to hundreds of thousands of people in Ukraine. Now imagine for a moment then, someone walks up to you with a bowl of food to give to you and your family and says, it's going to be okay. We're going to be here for you. And that's why today I'm going to encourage everyone to donate to different charities. Particularly the one I want to focus on today is the World Central Kitchen. They are a group that is uniquely designed to get to areas that need aid and support, usually in the first few hours after a disaster, such as a hurricane uh, that hit Madagascar, the, the flooding in Brazil. They can get there on the ground fast. They can provide food to people when they need it, rather than just helping them weeks later. And right now they're on the ground at the borders of Ukraine and helping people who are trying to get to safety. It's an amazing group that can provide that moment of need and help people when they are in a state of worry. They don't know what's going on. It's amazing what can happen with a good bowl of food and someone who can say, it's gonna be okay, we're gonna help you out. You don't have to give an astronomical amount, a dollar, five dollars, something like that can really make a difference if everyone does it. So please donate generously. If you have a particular charity you like, let me know that down in the comments down below. Maybe we can add to that as well. So thank you for that. One of the things I love about Wood by Wright is the community here. You guys are amazing and you're generous and you're loving. So let's show that to the people who need it right now. So on that note, I think that'll about do it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day.